Hello! Today we're going to be working on a bunny that's a sea bunny. It's technically a sea slug, but it's one of the cuter things to come out of the ocean, and I thought we could make one of these today. So let's get started with what we're going to need. The yarn colors we'll be using are black, white, and then if you want to do any little blush around the eyes, a light pink. Polyfill or any kind of stuffing that you would like to use. Remaining yarn works really well for stuffing. And then whichever size safety eyes you would like. A yarn needle, a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook, stitch marker, pair of scissors, and lastly, some black thread, a very thin needle that'll go through the size of the seed beads, and just some black seed beads or whichever color you would like to add the little spots onto the back of the bunny. We've got all our materials, so let's start with our white yarn, and we're going to make a chain of 11 stitches. And we're going to start off making our slip knot. We go around the index finger once, then twice, pull the first loop over, and then pull the second loop off, and then just place our crochet hook in there, and just kind of tighten that down. And then we've got our slip knot and we're going to chain 11. One, two. Now we're not going to chain these super tight because we are going to be working in the back bumps of these chains. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I've got my chain, but it's not tight, but it's not too loose either. And like I said, we're going to be working our stitches down this back bump, a little ridge right along the back of the chain. Starting from the second chain on the hook along these back ridges, we're going to crochet nine down the edge. So this is the first one. So we've got one single crochet in the back ridge and then we'll do that for the next eight stopping one stitch before the end there's two three and this is why you don't want to crochet or chain too tightly because uh, it's hard to get into these little back ridges but this is the only time we'll have to do it so it's not so bad. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then here is nine. And this is where I'm going to place my stitch marker. Because it's not quite working in um, the regular rounds, but this is going to be kind of our starting and stopping point. And then in the final back loop, we're going to do an increase. And we're going to crochet two single crochets in this last back loop. And that finishes out the chain. And so we'll work starting around on the next side. And then we'll just uh, keep going. And what we're making is mostly like um, a large oval instead of a regular circle like most amigurumis are, are made out of. So we're ready to start on the other side. And we're going to start into this stitch right here. There's like a little bump going across and then a stitch right underneath it and that's where we're going to do our first uh, increase. And so we'll increase in the first stitch and I do know that after working in the back bumps on the previous stitches that this row can be a little snug to get your crochet hook into but as we go and everything widens um, further out it gets so much easier and it's just like back to normal. So we're going to single crochet one into each of the next eight stitches. So there's 
one, two, three, four, and let's see if I can get it into the next one. This is where it gets a little snug. Five, six, let's see, seven, and then eight. And there we've got those, and then we'll start going around the curve. So we're gonna go into these next two stitches and I will admit that these can be very hard to get into. And so for these two, we, we may struggle a little bit. But again, after this and everything widens out, these stitches won't be such a, a frustration. So it is kind of hard to see, but there is a stitch right there. And we're going to increase in this stitch and in the one right next to it. So there's one. two, and then the stitch right next to it, three, four. And so that starts widening up the, uh, the curve and it'll make it so much easier to get into as we go around. And then to finish off up to the stitch marker, we're just going to single crochet one in the next eight stitches. And this side is quite a bit easier. And you'll notice after that rough beginning, it really does start to get much easier to complete this little guy. And I have squeaky yarn. Let's see here. So we'll finish right up <laughs> to the stitch marker. And then we'll pop that back in. And this is a, definitely a project that a stitch marker does make a lot easier. And so we should be ending up when we go all the way around with 24 stitches. And we're going to be uh, increasing around for a few more times up until we get to 36 stitches. For the curve going around, we're going to increase in the first stitch after the stitch marker single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and then we're going to increase in the fourth stitch. And that will widen up the end. And then we're going to single crochet one in the next eight. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, let me grab some more yarn, seven, eight, and then, whoop, let me get that back on my hook, so that was eight. Then we're going to repeat that pattern that we did at the back end up here. So we're going to increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, and then single crochet in the next eight up to the stitch marker. And I hope you're noticing that it is starting to get much easier and that we're over the rough patch of really tight, hard to get into stitches. Okay, and then coming up to our stitch marker. Pop that out. And pop it right back in. Eight, 
Okay. There we go. And then that ends that row where we will have a stitch count of 28. And you'll notice when we're going around, whatever pattern we do here at this end, we'll crochet eight along here, repeat at this end, and then crochet eight back up. So the pattern isn't too complicated, it's just making the increases. So we've got a stitch count of 28, and we're gonna do a loop around our little racetrack once again until we end up with 32 stitches. And so how we do this round is we're going to increase into our first stitch after our stitch marker. We're gonna single crochet one in the next four stitches And then we're going to increase. Oh my goodness, this is a lot squeakier than I realized. Now we're just going to single crochet one in the next eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and we're just going to repeat the seam pattern so we'll increase single crochet one two three four increase and then single crochet one in the next eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. And if you have any tips on how to get rid of squeaky yarn, or so just the noises for videos, that would be great. And I'll just pop my stitch marker back in, and that gives us a stitch count of 32, and we'll be doing one more increase round, so we'll be up to 36 stitches. And we are just moving right along on this, and I'm just hoping everything starts feeling easier for everybody, and we'll just keep going. So we're ready for our final increase round. And we're going to go ahead and increase in that first stitch after our stitch marker. And now we're going to crochet one in the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll increase and then we'll single crochet one in the next eight stitches one two whoops I made a mistake so we got our increase and then there's one two three four five, six, seven, eight, same pattern. We're going to increase, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, increase, and then just single crochet the next eight, three, four, five, 
six, seven, and eight. And that is all of our increases. And we've got a really good base. And then the next four stitches are going to be single crocheting, just one in each stitch all the way around. So we've got our increases all complete, and now we're just going to single crochet one in each stitch all the way around for a total of 36 stitches, and we'll do that for a total of four rounds. And I'll get started on the first row with you, and then after we get done with all of the four rows, we'll meet back, and that's when we'll start decreasing. But for right now, we can just turn on some music, watch a video, just kind of easily go through the rest of these rounds with a single crochet and just kind of take a breather from the increase in patterns. So we're just going to work through this one together. And I thought when I saw one of these sea bunnies online, I thought, oh my gosh, these things are so cute, and finally, there's something out there in the ocean that doesn't absolutely terrify me, and I thought, well, with Easter coming, and although I've made two other bunny patterns, maybe this would be a fun alternative to a traditional Easter bunny, if you wanted to really throw something different into an Easter basket, or a little Easter plush to give to someone, and so I thought, even though I've just done two other bunny ones, I throw this one in and then I'll take a break from bunny tutorials for a little while and bring back some other styles of projects. Okay, so we are at the end of the row and we've got 36 stitches and then I'll have you complete the next three rows and then we'll meet back up here and then we'll start working on all of the decrease rounds. Okay, we've got our four rounds completed and we're starting to look like a short Twinkie right now. And here's where I wanna go ahead and add our safety eyes in and on my original bunny, um, I came down between rows five and six, and then there's three spaces between the eyes is how I put them in for mine, but you can place yours however you'd like. But I found um, to count down where to place uh, mine at the five and six, you just kind of take this first curve and then use that as round one and go one, two, three, four, five, and then right along this row right here is where I'm going to place mine. So I'm just going to pop in some safety eyes and just kind of see if I like how it looks. And I'm not exactly sure what size safety eyes I'm using. I get them from Amazon and they say in the description what size you're getting. And then they just send them to you without any sizes on the packaging. And so... I just go at this point by um, preference, which one I think I'd like to, there we go, to do. And so there's my safety eyes on. And next we're going to go ahead and do the decreases to finish up the body. We are ready for our decrease rounds. And these are going to be pretty familiar because they're just the same as the increase rounds except for backwards. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off doing an invisible decrease. And how I do this is I insert my hook in the front loop only of the first stitch, the front loop only of the second stitch, pull through the first two stitches, and then pull through again. And that's how I complete an invisible decrease. And then we're going to single crochet one in the next six stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six. We'll do our invisible decrease. And then we'll single crochet in the next eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll do our invisible decrease. Oops, there we go. And then we'll crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do an invisible decrease. And then single crochet in the remaining eight. One, two, three, whoops, sorry, four, five, six, seven, and then lastly, eight. And that'll bring us down to 32 stitches. And then in our next round, we'll decrease down to 28. Okay, well, let's decrease down to 28 stitches. And we'll start off with our invisible decrease. Then we're going to single crochet one in the next four, two, three, four. We'll do our invisible decrease. We're going to single crochet one in the next eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, and then we will invisible decrease. Single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four, decrease. The next eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and lastly eight. All right, and this is really starting to close up our gap and continue on with kind of that twinkie look. All right, and so we have uh, decreased down and we are going to do one more decrease down to 24. And then we'll do actually one more decrease after that, but it's just a tiny bit different because we're pretty much um, going to be decreasing to try to close it up as much as possible. All right, we're at 28 stitches, and now we want to decrease down to 24. And to do that, we're going to do our decrease, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then decrease. Single crochet in the next eight. There's one, two, 
do our decrease and then one two let's get in there and get the decrease and then single crochet eight one two three Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I think next we're going to add a little stuffing in just to give it something to hold on to. But there we go. We are down to 24 uh, decreases. And we are going to do another decrease, but basically what we're going to be trying to do is um, we're going to have a bit of a pattern and then we're going to try to decrease until it's pretty much closed but we'll have time to add stuffing in as, as we go and so i've got some polyfill and i'm just going to get a good start on this it doesn't have to be uh, full at this point because as we decrease we will go ahead and add stuffing to fill it out and this is where you'll notice that the back will really start to smooth out and not have those bumps towards the end so it'll have a cleaner look but just really try to push it into those ends and I'll start with this and then we'll start decreasing um, with the end goal to really close up this area so we're ready to do our first invisible decrease and we'll just go straight into a second decrease. So no single crochets in between. We'll then crochet our eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll do our back-to-back -back decreases. Easier said than done sometimes, but there we go. And then continue with the eight. And we're going to try to get this hole as small as possible. That way it really um, limits down the amount of sewing closed we have. Okay, and so we'll stop there. And this is a good time to add some more stuffing. And really push it in under those edges and we'll have time to fill in the center part more right before we close everything up but this really works in to give it that rounded look all right so I think what we're going to do is for the next one and you really don't need a stitch marker because we're just going to keep going to really try to uh, decrease this all the way close. So we're going to do two more invisible decreases. Oops, I got tangled up there. And then we'll uh, crochet five. One, two, three, four, five, just because we're running low on area. 
and then we'll do two more back-to-back -back decreases. And then we'll do five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're getting pretty small there. So let's do two more decreases. And then we'll do a repeat of um, crocheting. We'll do four, do two more decreases, four, and then it should be just about right to sew closed and put more stuffing in. Four, anything to kind of limit the amount of sewing that we have to do. So we'll do back-to-back -back decreases. And then four. And then we'll add a little more stuffing. And then final, final decreases. Just two of them. And if you feel like you want to decrease even more, you know, to really close it up, that's fine. But I think I'm going to stop here, add in some more stuffing, and then just hand sew the rest closed. So I stuffed mine to about a medium firmness. And now I'm just going to cut off a length of yarn. And just sew that last little gap closed. And so basically, I'm just going to come through one side and just kind of pull everything, just kind of go back and forth, mostly just using the front loops only, and just closing everything up and just kind of pushing everything flat, kind of pulling tight until just got everything kind of closed up and then I can just weave my yarn in a few times to secure it and that's all I need to do for closing off the body and that just gives us kind of a finished Twinkie look, which um, if you made them a little bit bigger, you could definitely do with yellow a Twinkie and give him little eyes and kind of make a little dessert out of him. So we've got him all set and now we're going to start working on the ears and the tail and we'll start off with the ears and then work on the tail next and our last little bit we'll just be putting cheeks and his spots on. So here is a completed ear, and I wanted to show you this before we got started making them uh, because there is color change. And the one hard part about uh, working with black yarn is it may be hard to see the stitches, um, you know, as we're, as we're going along the tutorial, but we don't use black yarn for very long. And so we're going to start off with a magic ring um, with four uh, stitches in the magic ring and then increase to six and that's when we'll change to white. So it's not very long for either the ear or, and I'll show you what one of the tail looks like, um, to have to do anything in black. So it'll go pretty quick and these are really small little pieces so we'll get these whipped up in no time. We're starting off with our black yarn for the ears and our first step is to make a magic ring. And to do this, I'm going to take the yarn and I'm going to lay it over my index and middle finger, hold it in place with my thumb, bring the yarn around and cross over the yarn, bring it around the top so it's straight and just kind of hold it in place with my thumb and ring finger. 
I'll take my crochet hook, I'll place it under the first loop, I'm going to slide it around, and then what I'm going to kind of do is just kind of scoop under and turn, and it's going to make a little wrap around here, and then I'm going to come up to the top and just grab the second loop and then just pull it through. And what that'll do is it'll just bring up a circle that we're going to crochet into. So we have our magic ring and we're going to crochet four single crochets into it. So we're going to crochet one, two, whoops, let me get back on there, three, and four. And then we're going to take our tail and we're just going to kind of pull it close but not super tight so that way it makes it easy to get into that first stitch and I know working with black yarn oh my gosh it's so hard to see these but in the first stitch is where we're going to uh, start our second round and increase from four stitches to six so we're ready to increase from four stitches to six and in our first uh, stitch we're going to increase so we're going to put two single crochet into that first stitch. In the second stitch, we're going to do one single crochet. And we still have two stitches left. But before we work on those, I'm going to incorporate my white yarn and I'm going to start bringing that in to be ready for a, uh, for a color change, which I'm going to do on our last stitch and that way the next round will be in white. So I'm just going to lay this over on top and I'm going to crochet over it. So in the third stitch I'm going to do an increase. So there's one, two. Now I'm going to change colors in our last stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the last stitch and I'm going to pull through the black. Now I'm going to take the white yarn and I'm going to pull that through the two black loops. And there we go. We have switched over to white. And then we also have our increase up to six stitches from four. So in our third round, we're going to go from six stitches to eight in white. And now we don't need the black yarn anymore. So I'm just going to clip off a piece of that. And then we're just going to start working with the white yarn. And in our next stitch, we're going to increase with putting two single crochet in the first stitch. In the second stitch, We'll do one single crochet in the third stitch, one single crochet, then we'll do an increase in the next stitch, and then a single crochet in the remaining two stitches. And that's going to bring us to eight. And so there we go. We've got our color change and we're at eight stitches. We're going to do one more increase from eight to ten. And then we'll do uh, one final round with just one uh, stitch in each of our stitches. Okay, we're going to increase from eight to ten. And to do that, our pattern will be to increase in our first stitch. There's increase. We're going to single crochet one in the next three stitches. And then we're going to increase. And then increase one in the next three stitches. And that'll bring us up to 10 single crochet all the way around. 
Okay, I popped my stitch marker in, but all we're going to do on this final round is just single crochet one in each of the next 10 stitches. And so we'll just go ahead and complete this final round together. And then what we'll do is have you go and create your second ear. And then once that's completed, we'll work on making the tail. And those are even quicker than the ears. So we've got the 10 stitches. Let me just pop out the stitch marker, get that last stitch. And then what we can do is slip stitch in the next stitch and then just cut a tail off long enough for sewing. And then with the remaining tails, we can just tie knots and then just tuck those down into the ear. And that's all you need. Um, there's no stuffing that goes in these. They just remain flat. And so trim off these little tails and then just tuck that down in there and that's all it takes for the ear and then just make one more and then once that's done we'll work on the tails and then it'll be time to start putting the bunny all together we are ready to make the tail and these only have three rounds, so the color change comes really quickly on these. And we're gonna end up making a total of uh, three of these in order to make up the uh, full tail that goes all the way around. So let's start off with our magic ring. And again, I just take the yarn, go over my two fingers, come around with a, where it crisscrosses, then I take my hook under the first loop, kind of scoop up under the back loop, and then come around to the second loop on my finger and just pull through. And there are a lot of tutorials on how to uh, make magic rings that'll probably be easier than mine, but this is just how I do it. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start off with just single crocheting two into the magic ring. Okay, so we got our two, and because these color changes come so quickly, I'm going to go ahead and grab some white yarn, and we're already going to get ready to incorporate the white yarn. So I'm just going to lay that over, and I'm going to single crochet over the yarn for the third stitch and then in the fourth stitch I'm going to come up with my black yarn and then I'm going to pull through with the white. So when we start the next round it'll be working just with the white and we'll pull our tail to close up the ring but again not too tight because we've got to get into that first stitch. And so we've got our magic ring with four single crochet and our color change. And so we will increase from four single crochet to six with white in the next round. Okay, let's go ahead and start our increase from four stitches to six, but I am gonna just snip off that extra black yarn because we don't need any more of that for the rest of uh, this piece. And so we've got that and we're going to go ahead and go into our first stitch and we're going to do an increase. So we're going to single crochet twice into that first stitch, once into our second stitch, and then we're going to crochet an increase into the third stitch. And in our last stitch, just a single increase. And that gets us up to six single crochet with the white yarn. And in our final round, we'll just crochet one into each of the stitches. So let's complete our final row 
on this little piece of the tail and that's just one single crochet in each of the six stitches and then once we're done with this we'll have you make two more and then we'll be able to start putting all the parts onto the bunny so there's three four five and six and then we'll do the same where we'll just slip stitch into the next one and fasten off leaving a tail for sewing and then for the uh, stuffing or anything if you just tie off these again and stick them inside that's all the little um, stuffing that you need for the tail because it's so tiny it doesn't take hardly anything at all so just tie these into knots and then uh, just kind of stuff them into the tail and that'll give the tail a little bit of poof that it needs and um, they're pretty much just a little tiny bit of stuffing that goes into them they don't really poof that much at all so we'll do that get the sewing tail out of the way And then once you stuff that in there, that'll give all the little puff it needs. And then you can kind of see on these that they're, they're not real big. And so we just need two more of these. And once that's done, we can start uh, sewing everything on. For the first part that we're gonna add on, we'll start with the ears. And where I like to place my ears is really close um, to the eyes it's just a few stitches away and then what I do is I start with the first ear kind of working from the center down and then I'll bring the other ear from the center down to try to get them pretty close together uh, for the look that I've got here it's kind of hard to explain but it kind of reminds me of the pictures online of where the ears are placed for the actual sea bunnies so for our first ear I'll bring my bunny over I'm gonna come in right here uh, right where the curve starts and I'll place that one there and then I'm just gonna kind of get an idea of about where the ear ends so it's going to come out right about here so then I'll just bring my needle through that stitch bring the ear up and then on this side I'll just bring it through and this just kind of secures it into right where I want it and then I'll just sew all the way around but this just kind of locks it right into place so I know right where the ear is going to be and then as far as sewing I just kind of come up go down come up through the yarn which is always easier said than done <laughs> come on get in through there and just keep repeating that all the way around until I've got my ear completely sewn without any gaps. And so that's how I get my first ear on. Or you can do whatever kind of uh, sewing that works best for you. Um, and then we'll go ahead and meet up after we've got both ears sewn on. So we've got the bunny ears on. And then the next area we're going to work on is the tail. And how I've kind of done the tail is I put the first one in the center and then the other two kind of diagonal from there and I do that working right here as we worked that little curve for the ears where that's where we're going to work with the first part of the tail and so we'll go ahead and get that started next so I've got my uh, yarn threaded onto my needle and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and sew the little uh, first piece of the tail right here right where the curve is so the back of the tail will sit right here on this curved edge 
So what I'll do is I'll just kind of come in through this side, come in through the other side. And then like I did with the ear, I'll just kind of come up, bring it through, and that'll just kind of secure the tail into place. And then what I'll do is I will just sew the other two, just coming in using the same stitching I did with the ears for the tail. Once I get it secured in place, I'll just sew all the way around and then just keep working on the other two. And once we get our tails put on, we'll meet back and then we'll start with the final details. We've got our tails onto our bunnies. And then the next step I was going to do was show you how to put a little bit of blush under the eyes to kind of give a little look of blushing on the cheeks. And to do that, I'm just taking um, just a scrap piece of pink yarn that I have and just gonna thread that on. And then I just kind of come in through the, the bottom of the body and right up under the eye and then just come over a few stitches and then just do the same thing just bring it up through and let's see we'll bring the little yeah right about there and then just pull oops I got everything kind of tangled up but that gives us the first little blush and then just kind of come through for a few stitches and then pull that. My goodness, this yarn is just wanting to be all wrapped up. And just come around for a few stitches and it just gives it a little look of blush. The other thing you can do is just take a little bit of makeup and uh, just put a little eyeshadow or blush or something right under there and that'll give it a little color too. But that, that step's completely optional. I just do it for a, a cute look. And so we'll go ahead and just snip these little tails off. And that takes care of the blush onto the little cheeks. And our final step to really make this um, have the little spots like the sea bunny is to just put a little, oh, just got some more yarn on there. Didn't even realize it was coming up. There we go got the blush and all the pink yarn off. Okay, and so the last thing is just to get these little beads on. And that's just simple little seed beads that I have that I could just kind of scattered throughout. And I just used some sewing thread, um, a very, very small uh, needle to go through the seed beads. And these were just some extra seed beads I had around and the reason I kind of like these uh, it's hard to see but they've got a little shine to them and so that's kind of I kind of thought they looked prettier than the just the plain black and just kind of make it pop a little and so that's the last thing we'll be putting on so I've got my needle threaded and in order just to make sure everything stays in pretty secure I'm just going to come in a few times with the needle and just kind of pull it in just to make sure that it's kind of all just weaved in there and the beads won't fall off. Now if you're doing the beads, I, I guess you know you wouldn't really want to give this to a small child. In that case you would just want to take uh, some black yarn and maybe just make some spots that way. And the same with the safety eyes. Uh, I, I know that they feel like they're on really good, but I'm never 100% positive that a small child couldn't bite them and, and get them to pop off. So I'm just gonna take a bead, and the nice thing about this is, you know, there's no right or wrong place to start putting your, your little spots onto your bunny because every bunny's gonna be completely uh, original with where their little spots are placed. So just put some spots, just a little bit of everywhere. And that is the last little step for making the bunny up and having a cute little sea creature that doesn't 
look like it's going to eat you. Let me go down here, come up a little further away. And let's see, pop another one. Right on there. And so with my first bunny, you can kind of see how I spaced them out. And that's kind of just the end result of what the bunny looks like. I think these things are really cute and kind of a different take on just making your traditional bunny. Uh, I'm going to have some pictures posted of what they look like uh, from the internet, of pictures of people got them, uh, took of them in the water. But I think these things are really cute and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I am going to put my Instagram information in, so if you do make one of these, I would love to have you send me a picture of it. And so that's everything with this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great day.